In September 2000, world leaders adopted the Millennium Declaration and created eight key Millennium Development Goals. The target date is 2015 and is designed to bring about improvement in the lives of the poorest and most vulnerable worldwide, in particular women and children. In working toward achieving these goals, the United Nations Economic and Social Council sponsored a special event, engaging philanthropy to promote gender equality and women's empowerment. But as today's program indicates, full empowerment requires more progress in two key areas. <clears throat> First, expanding economic opportunity, and secondly, ending violence against women. The global recession has shown once again that women and children often bear the brunt of economic downturns. A bad economy inevitably results in more girls being pulled out of school, fewer decent jobs for women, and higher rates of violence. As the Nobel Prize winning economist Professor Amartya Sen tells us, Every year, at least two million girls die worldwide because of inequality and neglect. Women and girls are missing, not merely as non-fictional characters, but in the cold light of day. Women and girls continuously lack the same access as men to education, health care, food, jobs, property, and decision-making powers in the political, social, and business sectors. Our goal must be clear. No tolerance of the use of rape as a weapon of war. No excuses for domestic violences. No looking the other way when it comes to sex trafficking, so-called honor crimes, or female genital mutilation. To achieve these aims, we must widen coalition for action. One in three women in the world will experience violence in their lives. One in three, regardless of station in life, of society, or economic standing. We know that violence against women is found on the streets. It's found in the home. It's found in the workplace. It's found in the media. At the dawn of a new millennium, in a world that is over 50% female, the message the media send is that women and girls have far less value than men and boys. And horrifically, it is found as an instrument of war in conflict-torn countries and as crime as girls and women are trafficked for labor or sexual exploitation. But I want to just um, bring everyone's attention to a little girl called Winneset. And when I said it's from Ethiopia, she was 13 years old, on her way back from school, and she was raped by four people, four men. The, the, the one of the men then said that it was his right, uh, having raped her and abducted her, that he should then marry her, and that she was then to be coerced into marriage because that's the rules. Well, her father supported her, and, uh, and she, in fact, went to fight for it. And uh, she didn't actually marry the man. And she's now reading law because she got an education. And now she's championing the rights of women in Ethiopia, which is her country. But is it right that sexual violence, domestic violence, you have all these situations for women that happen to you, and then you have to marry the man that does it to you? No. Education, education is key. So we have moved away from a victimization model in terms of violence against women and we're talking about an empowerment model. A discussion on economic empowerment. Women represent half the potential talent in the world. They are consumers and sellers. They make most of the important household purchasing decisions and they make those decisions actually more wisely because they have their children's future and their families in mind. Could the case for investing in women be any more clear than that? Empowering women is not really only a justice, a right-based approach, but it's actually good macroeconomic policy. So um, empowering women, allowing them to pursue a family and an education and have a career is actually giving countries a competitive edge. There have been many efforts uh, going from corporate uh, 
uh, sector in the developed world to microfinance in the third world that have tried to elevate the status of women and, and these have produced significant results but still there's a, a long way to go. Women are often paid less for the same work or de denied basic opportunities in the workplace uh, and in the uh, marketplace uh, and so these are things we still need to address. What people have to realize in business is that actually if they help educate the women, the women are going to work very hard because they're going to empower their family, empower their children and be good role models. So they are hungry for work and therefore if I was any big company or even a little company, I'd go straight to employment, education and employment of women. I'd say the first and foremost of these challenges is ensuring that the work with men and boys is done within a framework of women's rights that is focused on gender equality as a main piece of its work and that it guarantees that, in fact, the effort is intended to improve the lives of women and girls. A discussion on partnerships. Well, I think this is a, a absolutely fundamental issue, the partnership between foundations and the private sector and governments. In my view, it is absolutely necessary in order to enable gender equality and the empowerment of women. Governments alone cannot make it. Government to government doesn't work. It's got to have the private se sector influence in order to, uh, to make a difference. We need to have the major stakeholders, the non-governmental organizations, the private sectors, the civil society, the non-governmental organizations, the government, the philanthropic organizations, the corporate ones, joining hands together to work hand in hand to promote the idea and move the process forward. Today's event has showed us a very strong commitment on behalf of international corporations and partnerships to help the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. We believe that each group brings their own areas of expertise and we at Johnson & Johnson are looking forward to continuing um, our partnership with the UN. I think that the UN is a in a very good position working together with its corporate and other partners. I think it's important for all of us to embrace the pace that we need to take in improving the status of women around the world, that this is an urgent, urgent problem. As Martin Luther King said, we must not take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. We have to get there. We have to jump to the next level. And uh, I think that could be a very good result of, of today's meetings.